Modern smartphones, even lower-end ones, are starting to have excellent cameras that rival top-end professional cameras. In a test done by the company Zacuto, an iPhone beat a $5,000 Sony FS100 and tied with a Canon C300. But can the iPhone SE achieve that level of quality? Let's find out. New, interesting, random, tall guy films. I promise I'll get to just playing some music and running the test shots, but I want to cover some technical stuff first. One other note is that I'm only covering standard frame rates in this video. I will do a second video looking at slow motion and high frame rate options on the iPhone SE, but this video is just sticking to standard frame rates. One of the biggest factors to consider when determining the quality of a camera is the bit rate. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any information about the bitrate of the iPhone SE online. Based on the information in the menu, the camera records HD video at 8 megabits per second, full HD video at 17.3 megabits per second, and 4K video at 50 megabits per second. My analysis of actual footage mostly backs that up. HD footage had a bitrate of about 8.6 megabits per second, full HD footage ranged between 17.1 and 17.3 megabits per second, and 4K footage was about 52 or 53 megabits per second. Unsurprisingly, all the footage was encoded with H.264 in Apple's QuickTime container. Well, what does that mean? Well, the iPhone's compression is still less than YouTube or Facebook, so your footage will look worse after being uploaded online. Other than that, the bitrate matches about what you would get from a sub-$500 consumer video camera. Enough of me talking though, let's dive into looking at some daytime test shots, then I'll follow up with some thoughts. That was all rear facing camera, so now for some quick thoughts on the front facing camera. This is just a quick daytime test. It appears that the front facing camera on the iPhone SE only records at 720p at 30fps. This is just to prove that the dynamic range of the front facing camera is not very good at all. Alright, so now for my thoughts on the footage. Overall to me the footage looked very good. The HD footage was definitely pretty fuzzy, but the 1080p and 4K footage was very crisp and looked nice. I didn't notice any problems with the color, dynamic range, or anything else that would concern me. There was some clear sharpening and saturation added to the footage, but nothing so bad as to be artificial looking. The 4K footage was even good enough that I could see someone taking a still from the footage and passing it off as an independent photo, especially if they just wanted to upload it online. One thing I did notice is that the footage appeared to be cropped off of the sensor. That means that the 4K footage will only be using 3840 by 2160 pixels from the larger sensor. The 1080p footage cropped out more than the 4K footage, but it appeared that the crop was from the larger sensor of the area than 1920 by 1080, meaning the 1080p footage was downscaled from a larger sensor area. 
The 720p footage appeared to be cropped out of whatever the crop factor of the 1080p footage was. Basically this means that shooting 4K will give you the widest field of view, and that cropping an HD clip out of something shot in full HD will give you the same result as shooting natively in 720p. Anyways, let's talk nighttime footage, because let's face it, outside in daytime is ideal conditions for a camera, even when it's cloudy. Again, here's the footage, then we'll talk. Here is some selfie camera footage. And this is really just to demonstrate that the front facing camera on the iPhone SE is pretty much just complete junk in low light. There's way too much noise to be pretty much usable for anything. Okay, so obviously the iPhone SE starts to fall apart at night, which is no surprise. In more drastic lighting conditions, it shows that the SE doesn't have that great of dynamic range. It's not terrible, but it doesn't compare to most $800 to $1,000 video cameras. The image noise is noticeable, but not very distracting. The only major issue I noticed is that bright lights tend to cause a lot of flares and streaking, which can completely ruin footage. Interestingly, the problem is not nearly as bad with still photos. I want to finish up this video by running down the actual experience of using the camera interface. The app itself is very simplistic, with only a record button, a button to switch between the two cameras, and a button to look at recorded videos and pictures. If you are recording in any other mode than 1080p at 30fps, there will also be a small indicator showing what resolution you're shooting at, or the frame rate if you're using 1080p at 60fps option. By default, the camera is set to record at Full HD. If you want to change this, you have to go into the separate settings app and into the Photos and Camera option. There you have the option to change both the normal and the slow motion resolution and frame rate options. Overall, the iPhone SE has an awesome camera that really stands out when it comes to video. In future videos, I'll be looking at slow motion and high frame rate options, time lapse options, as well as what capabilities you can unlock with third party apps like Filmic Pro. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe.